Hey guys, Ms. Peterson here, and welcome to our physics lecture on work and power. So, what are we talking about? Uh, go ahead, set up your page for notes. These are our work and power notes, not acceleration, but you know the deal. So, what is work? Work is when a force causes an object's displacement. AKA work is when you apply a force to something and it actually moves, okay? That is called doing work on the object. It is in units of joules and it is a scalar measurement. Work doesn't have a direction, but the um, force must be applied parallel um, to the direction of mo motion, okay? The force has to cause the object's displacement or hinder it in order for it to count as work being done. So our equation is work. The F is of course force and D is displacement. Now, those little signs that might be familiar from math class. But they mean, come on, come on pen work. They mean parallel to. Ah. Parallel to. Okay. So if I apply a force upward on something, but then I walk with it, I'm not actually doing any work on that object because my force is in that like upward motion. Uh, work is in units of joules. Force is in units of newtons. And displacement is typically in meters. Okay. Now you might remember that a newton is a kilogram meter per second squared. A joule is actually in its base units is a kilogram meter squared per second squared. Now you might recognize these units as the units of energy and we'll be talking about the connection between work and energy soon. Um, also, there is a such thing as negative work, but because work is scalar, the negative doesn't mean direction. Rather, it means that the force acted against the displacement. Friction is an excellent example of something that often does negative work. Okay. Now, that takes us to power. What is power? Okay. Power is the rate at which work is done. It is in units of watts. What? What? What is the unit of power? What? Watt is the unit of power. Got it? What? Watt. Okay. Power is also scalar. Um, so we have the P for power, the W for work, and T, of course, is time. Now our standard units for those things is the watt or the capital W for watt. Work is in joules and time is typically in seconds. So if we look a little bit more carefully at those units, joules is kilogram meters per second squared, or meters squared per second squared. And if we divide that by seconds, we get pretty weird units um, for watts of like kilogram meters squared per seconds cubed, which is pretty weird that you won't often see those. Um, but it is good to know that they are just those derived units. Now, there is one other way that we can look at power. Okay, I'm going to do a quick little derivation for you guys. So we have power being equal to work over time, the rate at which work is done. And then we saw in our last slide that work is also force times distance over time. Okay, and there we have that distance over time. Distance over time is just your velocity. 
So another way, and be specific here, it is your average velocity, okay? So another way that you can think about power is the speed or velocity at which a force is exerted, or force times your average velocity, okay? And nope, the units still work out the same. We have force, oops, focusing on that unit analysis. We have the force, which is in newtons, aka kilogram meter per second squared, times velocity, which is in meters per second, and that leads us with kilogram, oops, I put meters per second squared for velocity, those are acceleration units, kilogram meters squared per second cubed. Okay, so you can see the units work out as well. Okay, cool. Okay, cool. Let's look at some example problems. So, example one. How much work is done to lift a 500 Newton weight? That's about 112 pounds, okay? So maybe it's a chest press or something like that. Up one meter at a constant speed. What if the weight is lifted and lowered? Okay, well, let's start with the first part of that problem. And let's just kind of think about what's going on here. So we have our weight. Oops. Come on. We have our weight. I'm just gonna draw a square because I can't draw things. We know that gravity is going to act on the weight, okay? And we know that you will need an applied force to lift it up. Now, it says in the problem that the weight of it is 500 newtons. So, force of gravity is 500 newtons. Remembering that force of gravity is just another word for weight. They mean the same thing. So then, our applied force, if we're going at a constant speed, that means all of those forces are balanced. So we would need to lift up with 500 newtons, okay? And then it tells us that the distance that we are lifting it up, or the displacement, is one meter. Okay, so to find the work, well, we're looking at the direction that it's moving in, okay? So the work that we do is the force that we apply times the distance over which we apply that force. So that is 500 newtons times the one meter, aka we have 500 watts of work, okay? Oh, sorry, watts is the unit of power, okay? Joules is the unit of work, joules. Okay, so then we did 500 joules of work to lift up that weight, okay? And we were doing that work against gravity, okay? Gravity was trying to pull it down, we pulled it up by giving it that force, okay? Now, what if the weight was lifted and lowered? Well, if we lifted it up and then we let it fall back down, did it actually move? Was there any displacement? No, the displacement would be zero and therefore the work would also be zero. There would be no net work done, okay? Okay, cool. Another way you could kind of look at that is you did 500 newtons of work, or sorry, 500 joules of work lifting it up, and then you did negative 500 joules when it was going down because you were hindering its motion. Gravity wanted to pull it down and you were exerting a force in the opposite direction of its motion. So it'd be like positive 500 and then negative 500. So 500 joules to lift up, negative 500 
jewels to lower. Okay. Okay, cool. Let's go ahead and look at a, another example. So this is a pretty challenging problem. I'm going to show you guys two ways that we can solve it. We have a car with a mass of 1100 kilograms and it's accelerated from rest so the initial velocity is zero and then it gives us an acceleration of 4.60 meters per second squared for a time of 5.00 seconds and we're looking for the power output okay how much power did the engine to supply to accelerate that car okay so let's think about those forces involved real quick we have the force of gravity acting on it and then we have the normal force and then we have an applied force due to that pushing of the car i'll say applied and then there is probably some friction there let's go ahead and draw that in but not as much because it's accelerating forward. Okay, so there are two ways that we could attempt to solve this. The first is we could recognize that power is work over time. Now I have the time, but I don't have the work. But I do know that work is the force times the displacement okay so I have the mass and I have the acceleration so I could find that force okay and I could even plug it in like this mass times acceleration times distance mad over time but honestly sometimes I think it's easier to just solve it out in steps so let's try that so force equals mass times acceleration so we have 100 or 1100 kilograms times 4.60 meters per second squared. That gives us, dang it, where's my calculator? There it is. Five thousand sixty. Up. Oh. Okay. Hi. Five thousand and sixty newtons. Okay, that gives us the force, but what about the distance? Okay, how can we find the distance? For that we would actually need some kinematics. Remember kinematics? Okay. You might remember from kinematics, um, I'm going to do this one over here. I'm gonna have to erase this and do it up there. And then we'll bring that equation back. So, distance equals V initial, times time plus one half the acceleration times time squared. Two variables that we know. Since the initial velocity is zero, we can just ignore that term and our distance just becomes one half acceleration times time squared. Okay, we plug in our values. One half times 4.60 meters per second squared times five seconds squared and that gives us a distance of uh, 57.5 meters okay so uh, that is our distance now we can plug it into the equation we have power equals the work aka the force times distance over the time so we have the force, 5,060 newtons, times the distance that force was applied for, 57.5 meters, 
divided by the time, 5.00 seconds. And we plug that into our calculator. And we get, I'm gonna go ahead and round it and just say 58,200 watts, okay? Another way you could represent that is 58.2 kilowatts. Okay, again, just dividing by a thousand and moving that decimal over. Okay. Now, that was a little bit challenging, but we got to the answer. Let's go ahead and see if we can get to the answer another way. Okay. So we have the same situation. Nope. Where we know the mass of the car. We know the acceleration. We know the time. And we are looking for the power. Oh, and we also know that the initial velocity is zero. Okay, so remember that other form of the power equation we showed where the power was the its work over time. So we could also think of that as distance over time, force, times that average velocity, okay? Now, to find the average velocity, well, we have its initial, but we need to know its final velocity. So, we could use that V final equals V initial plus acceleration times time, bringing back some more kinematics. So, the acceleration times the time gives us a final velocity of 23 meters per second, okay? So then if we need, oops, sorry, I use that line. Sometimes we use that line for average, but I'll stick with the subs of average. So then we can find our average velocity, okay? We know the initial and the final, zero and 23, and then just divide it by two. And that tells us that our average velocity during that time was 11.5 meters per second. Okay. And we had already found the force from the mass times acceleration, uh, which was that 50,060 newtons. So we could also plug that into the equation. And that gives us the same 58,200 watts or 58.2 kilowatts. Okay, cool. Okay, cool. That's it for our lecture on work and power.